Hi everybody, my name is Robert Vernick and welcome to episode 11 of Wine Terroir. And on this episode, we are gonna celebrate uh, hitting over a thousand subscribers and opening a super special bottle of Old Rioja. Stay tuned. Thanks for joining me. Um, as I said in the intro, uh, we hit a thousand subscribers and I thought I'd like to celebrate uh, in drinking something that I, don't, that I don't get a chance to normally drink. Um, and I pulled this out of my cellar. Um, this is a 1964 Rioja. Uh, so do the math, what's that? 50 some years, 54 years. Um, this bottle um, it's something that I haven't actually had this long, of course. Um, this is something that I picked up on an auction. Um, it is from Bodega Bilbañas, uh, which is uh, one of the oldest wineries in Rioja that's been continually running. And this is actually um, a special uh, single vineyard, very much like Lopez de Heredia is in terms of Vina Tondonia or, uh, or Vina Bosconia. This is uh, Vina Pomal. And uh, this wine is n uh, labeled on the back. It's quite interesting. On the back, it's labeled as uh, uh, Vino de Crianza, but on the front, it says Reserva Especial. Um, so I'm assuming it's a Reserva. Uh, and usually, sometimes I've seen uh, special harvest uh, labeled bottles. Um, they also have a Grand Reserva. Uh, but 1964, let's talk about 1964. 1964 is like one of the best vintages for Rioja in the last 100 years. Um, and I've actually had this bottle once before, and it was amazing. Um, so we're always rolling the dice when we're drinking an old bottle. So uh, let's give it a try and see what it is. But um, as we're doing this, I wanted to um, talk about opening old wine. Um, so for this, since this bottle is so old, um, I wanted to bring over um, a special tool that I like to use, and a lot of people in the um, wine industry like to use for opening old bottles. It's called the Durand. So the Durand is essentially um, combines two different types of corkscrews: here. the traditional um, spiral corkscrew, and then also um, an asso or waiter's key or prong uh, opener. And this is uh, someone invented this. Uh, an old wine collector invented this, and it's very funny because when I first got into wine, I remember uh, essentially jerry rigging something like this, where you basically put one in and then put one of these over top of it. Um, but this is nice because it basically has these uh, two interlocking parts. Um, so you, you screw this into the wine bottle first, into the cork, um, which basically grabs the cork tightly, um, and then you slide this into the, the little grooves here, uh, with the leading with the longer edge first, um, and this essentially pinches the cork. Um, so what happens is a lot of times with an older bottle, the cork will be either crumbly or um, you can usually push it down. So the the combination of the two prevents both from happening, and if you just want use one or the other, it's a little bit more difficult. Um, and it also comes with this nice little uh, cork case with a little magnet cover. Um, and uh, I think it's Duran.com. Yeah, the Duran.com. If anybody's interested, um, they're not cheap. Um, they're about uh, I think $125. Uh, sometimes they have Christmas sales or uh, Black Friday sales. But you could obviously buy a corkscrew like this for you know five six dollars and something like this as well. So, um, but the convenience of if you're drinking anything that's 20, 30 years old on a regular basis, um, it could be worth an investment because um, it's no fun fishing cork out of a really old bottle. So uh, let's open this. So I, when I open old bottles, I hate just removing, I just re completely remove the capsule. It just is way easier. Um, especially because sometimes like this one is, this capsule's essentially glued on there. It's been in this bottle for a really long time. Hope this is still good. Always rolling the dice. So it's quite dry. Um, in preparation of this episode, I've actually uh, sat this upright uh, for a day or two so it can settle. There you go. Came out all in one piece and it is quite soft. 
All right, let's check this guy out. So, um, 1964, uh, Bodega Bolaños, uh, Vino Pomal, uh, 19, uh, uh, Reserva Especial. Um, again, so Tempranillo based. Um, I'm sure it is a blend, uh, and I'm sure it's sat in old, uh, used oak barrels for quite some time. Uh, Vino Pomal is, um, uh, so, the tip, you'll, a lot of times with most uh, old school producers, you'll see them have two bottlings. Uh, so Vino Balbanas has two uh, bottlings on the high end. One is uh, Vino Pamal and the other one is uh, Vino Zacco, Z-A-C-O. And uh, the Zacco is in a Bordeaux bottle. Just like, um, And so what you'll see is that um, they'll put in the Bordeaux bottle um, with the higher shoulders, uh, they'll put what they can deem their more elegant wine. And then in the Burgundian bottle, um, they will uh, usually bottle what is their more powerful, uh, richer, fuller wine. Um, not all producers follow that um, historically, uh, but it's a general rule uh, that you can look towards. The color is crazy. Oh, I don't know if this is going to be any good or not. I think we're going to have to give this a little bit of air. It looks a little cooked. Or, um, smells a little cooked, like matterized. Mm, might be okay. Last bottle I had was phenomenal. A little piece of cork in there. Okay. So let's give this a look. Um, so this is definitely a you know a pale garnet color uh, with a tawny you know watery rim. Um, I will take a photo of this because. Um, it's really hard to see on the video. Uh, a really uh, pronounced nose. I, I'm going to give this a little bit of air. You can see as I swirl, it kind of color changing. It's cloudy almost. Actually, I'm going to let this sit for uh, a minute. I don't, I'm not sure how good this bottle is. Uh, I just want to give it its best chance of soft, so we'll uh, pause and come back. Um, pronounced nosed. Uh, there's a lot jumping out of the glass. It's not everything I was hoping it would be on the nose. I'm definitely getting aromas of um, uh, dried tea leaves, uh, a little, um, a little kind of like cooked, cooked stewed tomatoes. Um, you know, reduced cherries, almost like sour cherries, maraschino cherry, cherry liqueur. I'm also getting um, like a cedar tobacco, leather. Uh, almost, you know, even a touch of like a sherry kind of like, um, you know, oxidized, that typical uh, aromas uh, like an amontillado would be, uh, or um, you know, kind of almost uh, like balsamic, a high-end balsamic vinegar, but not in a bad, not super bad way. It's it's not as appealing as I would like. Uh, let's jump in the palate. So, the wine's dry. Um, still pretty good acid. Say uh, medium acid. Um, sometimes I think acid at, with wines this old kind of starts to fade away. Um, the the tannins are almost non-existent. I mean, low tannin, um, really resolved. Um, yeah, super resolved tannins. Um, uh, you know, the round. I get actually a little bit of fruit, um, kind of like sour cherry, a little bit of cranberry, um, a lot of leather, tobacco. Um, I think the maraschino cherry is uh, is still valid. Um, there's a touch of like a, you know, cedary spice going on, uh, especially on the finish. Um, medium plus length finish. Um, you know, de this is definitely on the on the downhill uh, for me. Uh, you know, the alcohol medium minus medium. Uh, I can't really, I don't know, it's probably 12, 12%. Um, the, I can't, actually couldn't find it on the bottle. I was looking to see what it was, um, but it is either written really small or so old that they didn't have to put that on there by law. Uh, what else am I going to say? Uh, 
super interesting, very different than the last bottle I tasted this, and you're gonna get, again, they don't, there's no great wines, only great bottles. Um, the last bottle was head and shoulders above this wine. Um, for me, this is still drinkable if you like old wine. If you don't like old wine, this is probably not palatable uh, for you. For me, this is, um, you know, I would say somewhere, you know, 82 points. Um, you know, I can, I can drink a solid glass and a half of this. Um, you know, I'll definitely, it's, it's an experience, not something I'm gonna look forward to drinking this bottle by myself. Um, so, not the most celebratory wine. Uh, I was hoping it was gonna show a little bit better. Again, um, you're rolling the dice here. Uh, it's, there's a lot of bottle variation with this many years on it. Um, it's educational and interesting to see how it can develop. There's still some of that fruit, um, but it's fun to drink. Um, so yeah, if you get a chance, um, do check out older vintages of, uh, of Bodega Bilbañas. They age really, really well. Um, and again, I think this bottle's past its prime. Um, they were acquired in 1997, I believe, by the um, Cordonu Group, if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, and since then, their wines uh, are a lot more modern and less traditional. They're historically very traditional producer. Um, so this is something that, you know, I don't necessarily recommend this producer uh, in modern, or in anything in the late 90s. So if you can find some of their older stuff, uh, check it out. Uh, it's worthwhile. They will, they will probably show better than this one showed today, um, but that's the way the wine world rolls. Uh, so yeah, uh, thanks for watching and thank you for all the subscribers that joined the channel. Um, I will work on getting more episodes out there and if you get a chance, please follow us on uh, Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. I will say um, I am very active on Instagram I, and everything I post on Instagram gets posted to Instagram or to um, Facebook and Twitter, but definitely Instagram community is a lot more active um, and an area where I probably have the most, uh, uh, the biggest following and uh, most discussion around wines. Um, so please look us up and if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed already, please do. Uh, when I hit some more milestones, I'll open some other interesting older wines. Take care. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Mm -hmm.